This is CNN, a network of Turner Broadcasting Systems. Coming up on CNN Sports Tonight, August 24th, 1989, the day baseball lost Pete Rose. You can imagine uh, this is a very sad day. We'll have all the reaction as coaches, former teammates, and friends talk about the decision to ban him from baseball for life. We'll also head to the field, to Royal Stadium, where Kansas City was going for the sweep of the Angels and its 10th straight win. We'll check out the action at Yankee Stadium, where the Orioles tried to keep their cool and their two-game lead. So keep it right here for CNN Sports Tonight. And welcome to the show. I'm Nick Charles. And I'm Dan Hicks, and for Fred Hickman, who has the night off. And by now, Nick, most everybody knows about the fate of Pete Rose, the hammer coming down today, and it came down hard. With finality, literally, Dan. Yeah. The odds finally caught up with Pete Rose, and Judgment Day arrived this morning. After six months of denials by him, delving by baseball, and delays through the courts, Pete Rose was banished from the game for life. After nearly three decades in the game, baseball for Pete Rose became a vanished reality Thursday. Baseball Commissioner Bart Giamatti in New York ended six months of swirling questions and banished Pete Rose permanently from baseball in front of a backdrop appropriately draped in funereal black. The banishment for life of Pete Rose from baseball is the, is the sad end of a sorry episode. One of the game's greatest players has engaged in a variety of acts which have stained the game. And he must now live with the consequences of those acts. In Cincinnati, Pete Rose fought through the sweeping emotion and finality of his judgment day. And as you can imagine, uh, this is a very sad day. You know, I've been in baseball three decades. And to think that I'm going to be out of baseball for a very short period of time, uh, hurts. But it soon became clear the principles in this drama were polar opposites on the central question of whether Rose bet on baseball. Rose signed an agreement to accept the commissioner's jurisdiction, but in the document neither admits nor denies he bet on the game. But Giamatti based his decision on two things, evidence of the commissioned report by Special Investigator John Dowd and the lack of a formal defense by Rose. And therefore, in the absence of any evidence to the contrary, I am confronted by the factual record of Mr. Dowd, and on the basis of that, yes, I have concluded that he bet on baseball. But Rose maintained what he said for months on the matter. Well, regardless of what the commissioner said today, uh, I did not bet on baseball. Rose did admit his mistake was betting on other sports illegally, and said months of public scrutiny is what finally persuaded him to stop fighting. The settlement is fair, uh, especially the wording that says that they will find no, they have no finding that I've been on baseball. It's something I told the commissioner back in February, and it's something I've told you people the last four months. Pete Rose has had the pleasure and luxury to choose his life's work with a perfect sense of what suited his talents. But the cord was cut Thursday. My life is baseball. Uh, I hope to get back into baseball as soon as I possibly can. Uh, looking forward to that. Uh, matter of fact, it's um, I've never looked forward to a birthday like I'm looking forward to my new daughter's birthday because two days after that is when I can uh, apply for reinstatement. Rose may apply for reinstatement into baseball in a year, and he boldly predicts he'll be back then. But none of the previous 14 men banished from the game ever got back in its good grace. Pete Rose is still eligible for the Hall of Fame in 1992. As a player, his consuming fire and accomplishments make him unquestionably qualified. But his personal standards of behavior are abstract qualities or character flaws that voting baseball writers may or may not consider. Certainly the commissioner is happy to beg that question. I know I need not point out to the baseball writers of America that it is their responsibility who decides who goes into the Hall of Fame. It is not mine. The only thing I can really say to the fans is, is obviously thank them for their support for 28 or 29 years. Uh, uh, I love the fans, not only Cincinnati, but of baseball in general. Uh, and the only thing I can tell the fans is uh, I did not bet on baseball. Uh, got too much respect for the game, uh, too much love for the game. Uh, and I appreciate how they've treated me over the years, uh, both as a player and as a manager. But for this day... The matter of Mr. Rose is now closed. It will be debated and discussed 
Let no one think that it did not hurt baseball. That hurt will pass, however, as the great glory of the game asserts itself and a resilient institution goes forward. Let it also be clear that no individual is superior to the game. Pete Rose was reminded in a startling way Thursday of a basic moral lesson. Actions have consequences. While the rest of us are filled with either relief or regret or both, because the unmistakable image of Pete Rose this day is, there is a great gloom under the gleam. Rose's lawyers made the initial approach to baseball officials expressing a desire to talk months ago. The two sides met again last month, which led to this week's settlement, which Rose will not contest, and which Giamatti said was never negotiable anyway. But Rose left a shred of mystery to the day, uh, saying sometime in the near future, he'll reveal his side of the story. Today's announcement sent shockwaves throughout the entire world of baseball, but nowhere were they bigger than the town where Pete Rose was born. Cincinnati, Ohio is where the legend of Rose was built, and that's where you'll find his proudest and most loyal fans. CNN's Ed Garston has more from the city where many still stand behind their hero. It was raining down on Riverfront Stadium when the commissioner lowered the boom on Pete Rose. The mood was just as gloomy as word of the local hero's fate flickered on storefront TV screens. I think that's horrible. He didn't do, I'm sure other people have done much worse than what he did. And Pete Rose has given his whole life to baseball. You can't ban, take someone's life from him that way. Yeah, it's a dark day for Cincinnati. It was a dark day, too, for team owner Marge Schott. The outcome um, was a sad one, but it was something that the commissioner had to do uh, to protect the sport. We spent five years together with the Pete Marge show. One guy saddened by the news was Tommy Helms. He'll replace his old friend and teammate as interim manager of the team. He said, Tommy, if you get the job, I know you'll do a good job. And uh, he was very favorable and things like that. Helms will meet with the players before Friday night's game. There will still be a Pete Rose in baseball, though. Pete Rose Jr. toils away in the minor leagues. But he had little to say about his dad. When I heard the news last night, I haven't, chance, I haven't had a chance to talk to my father. And, you know, and when I talk to him, that's when I talk to you guys. So until then, I have nothing to say. I think baseball is a great game. It's going to be loved by the fans, whether he did or he didn't bet on baseball. Well, not every sign of Pete Rose will disappear from Cincinnati. The city council decided the street in front of Riverfront Stadium should remain Pete Rose Way. If this is the greatest place in the world to play ball uh, or the greatest place in the world to manage a baseball team. This is the baseball capital of the world, as far as I'm concerned. Across Pete Rose Way from the ballpark at Flannery's Landing, Bones and the boys bellied up to the bar and drowned their sorrow over Rose, a guy they say they've known for over 35 years. Pete Rose, when he looks you in the eye and tells you, I did not bet on baseball, I believe Pete Rose. Pete, Pete's a tough old boy. He'll, he'll get along. The Hall of Fame, if Pete Rose don't belong in the Hall of Fame, they ought to close him. Headlines usually reserved for shocking world events, reserved for this one too and while this town may have lost its homegrown hero the folks here really believe that somehow pete rose will cross those foul lines once again ed garston cnn cincinnati interim manager tommy helms takes over a club that has long unraveled the reds are 12 games back after most experts chose them as preseason contenders the reds say the search is on for rose's permanent successor so baseball goes forward in cincinnati mm. even without pete well, the fallout and reaction from this major story continues and coming up on the show, we'll hear from baseball people and Pete Rose's former friend who was a key figure in his demise. In the meantime, the races forged ahead where the Royals went streaking into the night at home to try and finish off the sweep of the Angels and keep their own winning streak intact. Stay with us. CNN Sports Tonight, brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This, Bud's for you. Welcome back to CNN Sports Tonight. On a day, Pete Rose was suspended from baseball for life. Commissioner Bart Giamatti said he made a personal conclusion based on convincing evidence Rose bet on baseball. Rose's former friend Paul Jansen, who last winter after plea bargaining was sentenced to six months in a halfway house for tax evasion, also provided the key testimony that helped seal Rose's fate. Jansen reacted to today's news. It really saddened me that after everything that's happened in the past six months, he still can't face the truth. Now he admits that he had bad friends, he admits he bet with bookmakers, but he can't 
come to grips and admit that he bet on Major League Baseball and the Cincinnati Reds. There is no doubt whatsoever. Um, maybe this year he'll have some time to think about it and reflect, realize that people will respect him a lot more if he comes forward. For 22 years, Pete Rose played out his dream in the major leagues, and for five years after that, Rose still headed to the ballpark most every day as manager of the Cincinnati Reds. In all, nearly 30 years of relationships with teammates, players, fellow coaches, and others involved in the game were formed. Here's what some of those closest to Pete thought about today's announcement. Uh, the commissioner uh, has uh, taken steps to uh, do what he had to do, and uh, we're all going to miss Pete, but uh, baseball is bigger than all of us. I think that, uh, that given, uh, you know, considering everything, this is probably a, a, uh, a good thing for baseball to put it behind us as quickly as we can and, uh, and go on to the pennant races at hand. This will be... Uh... This will be big punishment for him. I don't think that there's no doubt about that. But um, like I said, the decision is made by the uh, by the commissioner of the league, and and um, he did what he thinks best. The rules are in black and white in Rule 21. We all abide by it. I don't think it should be above anybody. I refuse to believe he would ever bet on baseball, and I refuse it until I finally hear him say it with his own words. And I think he would if he did. I think a lot of people, like me, will be sad about the, the banning of a great star. He is certainly one of the greatest, but, uh, and he was a model. During my time as commissioner, he was one of the great models of the game uh, for all Americans, a guy who tried extra hard. But uh, laying aside the sadness, uh, Giamatti has done as he must. It's obvious that uh, I think that he lied, and uh, I'm sorry to see that. Uh, I'm just, it's the worst thing that can happen to a baseball player, you know, to be disgraced in the game that you've worked at and played so hard at. Uh, I'm pulling for Pete. I hope he has uh, uh, the ability to bounce back from this, whatever it takes, if it's rehab or, uh, you know, whatever, whatever's in his future. But uh, I think there's two, two teams on the planet good guys and bad guys and I think Pete Rose is a good guy personally I don't think Pete would bet on baseball especially his own club and you know that's just one of those things that's uh, we don't know if, that, if it's ever going to get answered I've read the whole 2000 page report now in his own deposition Pete admits that he has bet on a number of occasions with bookmakers football and basketball he states he never he constantly denies through the deposition he bet on baseball but I'm telling you you have to be deaf dumb and dead to believe that he didn't bet on baseball based upon all of the allegations within the 2,000 pages. There isn't a page of testimony that says he didn't. The baseball commissioner spoke of the stain Rose put on baseball, but the next question is how will today's affect not Rose's future, but his permanent place in the consciousness of the sport? Rose undeniably left his imprint on the game, but will he make the Hall of Fame now? The language of the ballot given voters is based on a player's accomplishments and includes judgment of his integrity and character. Here's a sampling of opinion. I think it would be ridiculous if he didn't make the Hall of Fame. I don't feel that the criterion for that honor should be based on what you do off the field. It should absolutely be based what you did on the field. And certainly what Pete contributed to that sport is uh, immeasurable and he should be in the Hall of Fame the first day he is eligible. I believe that it has a, no bearing on the Hall of Fame. That's my own personal thing. I think you have to sit down and you judge what did this man do. And same way as Nolan Ryan. I look at Nolan Ryan. I look at Nolan Ryan's record and I say he's a Hall of Famer. Well, if I look at Rose's record, you mean to tell me that doesn't match Ryan's record? Uh, that's the way I look at it. As far as baseball is concerned, uh, let's just hope he gets into the Hall of Fame because he deserves it. He, he was a heck of a player. And it's hard to believe, Nick, that for the second night in a row, Pete Rose appeared on the cable value network hawking mm -hmm. baseballs and autographs that he had in his storied years in his career. Even a fan called in and said, do you think the uh, Hall of Fame should wait because of all this off-the-field activity? He said he didn't think it had anything to do. What are your thoughts on that? I think it has something to do, but ultimately, no, Dan. I think he obviously, apparently, broke a rule and knew it was severe enough to get him a lifetime ban. No question. I wouldn't begin to measure his abstract qualities or the flaws in his character, but his gambling illegally is a victimless crime, only self-inflicted. I don't think Rose did anything fiendish enough, in my opinion, to keep him out of the Hall of Fame. All right. The game was alive, though, and well on the field tonight, but can the Baltimore Orioles take charge of the AL East? A doubleheader with the Yankees tonight. 
should shed some light on whether the O's will succeed where no one else has.